to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Morning, Joey, you're first. <laughs> Susie, yours came up as good moo. <laughs> I can moo. Me. <laughs> it is Monday. We actually like Mondays better now because it means there's going to be people that are working on the house. On the weekends, it's nothing. So yay, Monday. Let's get some work done. Let's get moving. We got a lot for you in the house. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Uberland. <laughs> uh, so um, I understand there's a little bit of frustration trying to get into the community platform on the website, drjudymorgan.com. Um, first of all, Gwen literally has had thousands of requests to get into the uh, platform. So it um, takes her a little bit of time to go through them. And this weekend was Sarah's first birthday. So, um, and they're getting better about taking weekends off. So when you're asking for them to get things done on Saturday and Sunday, just sit tight. Um, she's working on it. Oh, you're going to adopt a dog this week. That's awesome. Um, so, and this is a very new platform. Uh, we're sort of beta testing this and uh, Gwen has been in touch with the developers of the platform and we're trying to work out some kinks and bugs. So um, sit tight, we'll, we'll get you in there. Um, okay, uh, so, and we're hopefully only three to four weeks away from having a real studio and I can get out of the cat room. That'll be amazing, I'll have better sound and we can have spaniels behind me again and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, this weekend, well, the past week, there's been a huge uptick in discussion about grain-free diets yet again. I cannot believe we are still having this discussion two years later. Um, just absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I cannot believe how many veterinarians are still misinformed. I cannot, I can believe how many pet owners are misinformed because they listen to other people on social media and they listen to uninformed veterinarians. So here's the thing. Have dogs died from eating from dilated cardiomyopathy? And are those dogs eating, um, grain-free diets and do those dogs have low taurine levels and are those dogs related to certain breeds by the way i have a blog that should be out this week on taurine uh i went down a rabbit hole that i couldn't believe and found so much information so um uh it 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 will open a lot of um, eyes when this blog comes out. So, um, and it's so important, all the different things that taurine does. So here's the thing. When the FDA originally released that list of pet foods, put a lot of people out of business, decreased sales from a lot of pet foods that are decent pet foods, uh, made everybody question who was already feeding, people who were already feeding um, raw diets or home prepared diets without any grains in them made everybody question what they were doing let me just tell you dogs that are fed raw diets which don't include grains homemade foods which don't include grains but have a high meat content like the ones in my book those dogs are just fine they are getting the taurine that they need where we're seeing problems are pet food companies who decided that, ooh, peas and lentils and legumes are such a high source of protein, 
let's take meat protein out of the diets and let's put a whole bunch more pea protein in there. The diets will still have 30% protein. The label still reads really nicely. However, now we have an issue because we don't have enough taurine in the diet because we took the meat out and we took the grains out. Dogs are capable, not cats, dogs are capable of making taurine from grains. Why? Because grains contain methionine and cysteine. Methionine along with zinc and vitamin B6 work together to go through a nice chemical process which makes cysteine and cysteine gets put together to make taurine. These are amino acids. These are the building blocks of protein. So when we have protein that contains either cysteine and methionine along with enough zinc and B6 in the diet, or when we have enough meat and organs in the diet, we will have enough taurine and it will support the dog's cardiac function, along with brain function, eye function, and a whole lot of other things that you're going to see in the blog. It is so frustrating. I turned on my phone this morning. Somehow, I keep getting all these notifications from this Maltese group. I don't have a Maltese. I don't know how I got started in this group. I probably commented once. Um, there's so much misinformation, and I bet if I went to a Cocker Spaniel group or a Doberman group or a Doodle group, any group, I would see the same misinformation. People just one after another after another. My veterinarian says I have to include grains in the diet. I took my dog off his raw diet, and now I'm feeding him big-name pet food filled with corn and rice. Ugh, you just ruined their diet. You're, you're, you're feeding a myth. No, sh you should not be feeding only dry kibble with this much meat and this much peas. It's not going to work out well. But yes, you can feed diets without grains. Our dogs have zero, zero requirement for grains in their diet. Zero. Do not ruin your good diets. But if you are feeding something that is very high in pea or potato protein and very low in meat protein, and by the way, the way the bags are labeled in the U.S., you have no idea. Yes, it may have chicken as the first ingredient, but then it may have peas four different ways. Pea protein, pea starch, whole peas, split peas, whatever. It might have peas listed four different ways. The meat protein, if it's not a meal, if it's a whole protein like chicken or beef, that includes the water weight. Think how much a whole chicken weighs with the moisture in it, which is about 75% of the chicken, versus a cooked down and dehydrated meal. You know, if you cook that chicken down, you're going to get this little teeny pile of dehydrated meal weighs a lot less because you took 75% of the weight out. So you're not getting as much meat protein in there as you think you are because they're counting the water weight. It's all in the way that AFCO and FDA and everybody said that they could calculate these things and they did it to make it easier for the pet food companies to misinform you. But there is no need for grains in our dog's diet. And People were posting right and left, oh, my friend's small dog died of dilated cardiomyopathy because they were feeding a grain feed food. Well, it might have. I'm sure it did. But the, what they were feeding is not enough meat. They aren't getting enough taurine in there. And by the way, when this list first came out a couple of years ago, it was 500 dogs. Out of, I don't know, 150 million in the country, 500. Now they're up to, oh, 1,000 out of 150 million animals. You, we can't trust the FDA. We can't trust people who are doing research that is funded by big pet food companies, and they're the only ones who are going to fund this research because the small pet food companies don't have the money to do it. And by the way, the small raw pet food companies or gently cooked pet food, actually not even all the gently cooked companies are where we need them to be. A lot of these gently cooked companies are putting so many potatoes and starches in their foods, they're going to have just as much trouble.
because they've got too much starch in there. And our animals do not have a need for that. Hi, Ashley Luke. Everybody say good morning to Ashley. She owns hair today. By the way, meat-based products. She's not pushing a bunch of carbohydrates. I don't. I wasn't watching to see if Dennis Becker is on this morning, um, but you know, meat-based products that all provide. We don't have a bunch of starches in these foods. Joyce Rath, worst food to feed your pets. How many have science diet killed? No, thank you. Exactly. Um, interesting. I'm writing another blog for the cat site. And I was looking up in the past three years recalls and the different things that pet foods were recalled for. You know that excess vitamin D problem? Ah, hi, Dennis. That excess vitamin D problem was found early in the fall of 2018. Massive recalls across a lot of companies for excess vitamin D early 2018. Hills knew about it. They didn't announce their recalls until February. That's why they have so many lawsuits, because they killed a lot of animals that did not need to be killed, because they knew there was a problem, and they let it ride. Can't trust them. Can't trust them. <sighs> well, that's my Monday rant. Lordy. I don't know. Maybe we should rename this Dr. Morgan's Morning Rants. I don't know. Oh, the cat site is uh, Catastrophic Creations. Um, I have sent them two blogs. The, uh, the pet food one isn't going to be ready for um, a little while. So, But if you go to Catastrophic Creations, you will uh, start seeing my blogs on there. Um, the first one I did was on detecting pain in cats and different ways it's treated. Uh, I sent them a second one, and I can't even remember what it was. Uh, I don't think it's been posted yet, but I will repost them on here when they come up. So... Yep, you can make your own raw. <laughs> Name it Dr. Judy Turned Up. Mm. Yeah, well, somebody uh, posted on one page that I commented on something, and they said, <laughs> we need more of your no BS, tell it like it is. I'm like, oh, I know. It was, uh, somebody's dog had bloody diarrhea, went to the veterinarian, and oh, by the way, the bloody diarrhea started the morning after the veterinarian gave it a puppy vaccine that the owner had not asked for. Took in a healthy puppy. Next morning, we got bloody diarrhea. So she called them, and what did she get in return? Three medications. She got metronidazole. Uh, she got, which of course, that's what you give for all bloody diarrhea, unless you follow me, and then you give Coptis. Uh, she got Panicure, which is a dewormer. No evidence that the puppy has parasites, but hey, here's a dewormer. And she also got Fortiflora, which is Purina's um, uh, probiotic. Uh, made with Animal Digest, which is a rendered product, extremely likely to have pentobarbital, which is euthanasia solution. Oh, you're going to May's Landing. Hi, Teresa. Uh, so, yeah. So, of course, I went on there and shot down all three medications that were sent home with the puppy. And, of course, it was a weekend, so the poor woman was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. But, anyway. <laughs> I'm not saying we need to stay away from veterinarians. We have one coming out to get blood work uh, on our kids uh, next week. I'm um, not saying you need to stay away. I'm just saying you need to be well-informed and well-educated so that you can uh, speak up. Hair today. Hair today. Thanks, Ashley, for posting that. Uh, what's my opinion on having baby teeth that haven't come down out on their own removed? You need to have them removed, but give them at least 12 to 18 months before getting them removed, but you need to get them removed because they're going to shift the bite and cause uh, all kinds of dental problems. So... Um, it's catastrophic. Do these vets have a license? <laughs> well, okay. Gotta go, guys. Uh, let me find my music. Uh, gotta go get animals fed and all that stuff that we're supposed to do in the mornings. How's the book coming along? Uh, back burner at the moment. I only have one chapter left. It's the kind of thanks for coming along for the ride. I get my list. 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 And I gotta start packing again soon. Funny games.